I'll turn it over to you to uh, open it up for the public hearing. Declare the public hearing open. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak about the proposed budget? Good evening, Commissioners. I'm Emily Light, Davidson County School Superintendent, and I appreciate the opportunity to have a few minutes tonight. I want to begin by thanking each of you for your continued support during the 2022-2023 school year. We are especially grateful for the additional per-pupil funding you provided and have proposed as part of this year's budget as well. Specifically, in addition to the increase in per-pupil expenditure, we appreciate your partnership in helping us maintain safe schools for our students and staff with the additional capital to support necessary equipment for our school resource officers. I am confident the budget submitted to you is aligned to the goals of our strategic plan. I am also pleased to share that after submitting our 2022 financial report, as in the past four years, we received an unmodified budget of clean, and a clean audit result that also received a national recognition of distinction by two different accounting organizations. I appreciate the leadership of our Chief Financial Officer, Tyler Beck, and the finance team and the significant gains that we have made in our budget and our financial overall status since I became superintendent. As we continue to execute our plan for spending federal dollars allocated in response to the pandemic, as you know, this funding expires in September of 2024, so we are charged with planning for sustainability as well as reverting to our pre-pandemic use of capital funds to tackle the issues that we have been allowed to use federal funds to address. We are happy to report that the most recent North Carolina Teacher Retention Report shows a greater number of teachers and staff for the state and that we are retaining a greater number of teachers and staff that, than surrounding um, counties, districts, as well as the state. While this is positive news for us, we continue to be faced with filling vacancies as we are met with the increasing numbers of teachers and other staff nearing the age of retirement. We are committed to hiring the very best employees to serve our district, but as we all know, this is becoming a greater challenge year after year due to staffing shortages experienced in all professions. Our Board of Education has been very supportive in allowing us to use some funds uh, to provide targeted financial incentives uh, for one year only to assist in recruiting and retaining. As always, we are most grateful for the open communication and support that you provide Davidson County Schools. We value our partnership and look forward to our continued work to ensure all Davidson County School students are provided the quality of education they deserve. I'm happy to answer any questions at this time if you have anything about our uh, proposed budget submitted to Mr. Smith. The board have any questions? Any questions? No. Thank you. Thank you. Very good job. Good job. Anyone else in the audience who wishes to speak about the proposed budget? I don't know about y'all, but this is the time every year I miss Barney. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, just a point of privilege real quick. Uh, I, I'm a commissioner up here who has a child that is in the Davidson County school system, and it is a phenomenal school system, phenomenal teachers. You you can't, I mean, I, I couldn't send Riley somewhere else to have a better education than what she's getting right now. So from the bottom of my heart and as a parent, thank you. If there's no one else to speak, I declare the public hearing closed. No action by the board at this meeting. There's a budget workshop scheduled for June 1st, 2023. Jason. All right, rezoning. Poor Jason. All right. <laughs> Run him out every time, don't we? We got, we got to build some extra. Extra seat on yeah. the day is here. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, our first rezoning tonight is a, um, a request by Carlos, Tony, and Dora Ontiveros 
find the legal here and we'll get that read into the record. It's a request by Antonio, Dora, and Carlos Ontiveros to rezone property located in Lexington Township, tax map 350, lot four containing 0.69 acres more or less. Said property is located on the south side of Old Salisbury Road, approximately 430 feet southwest of the Cow Palace Road intersection. Rezoning is requested to change from that of LI, Limited Industrial District, to that of ONI, Office and Institutional District. You're not going to have control of that. Okay. Well, you might. We'll, we'll go we'll old school. We'll, have we'll go old school. <laughs> if I could, uh, there we go. The board will divert their attention uh, to, the, to the overhead. This Trontaveras' property is right here that's marked site. Um, it is surrounded to the south and to the, um, I guess that's to the west somewhat, by um, the city of Lexington, which is zone industrial. This is, um, let's see, Miller's property, um, Arnold Miller property here. It's on, the only thing that's on this property, it's vacant, but it does have a single family dwelling on it. Um, this is, um, what is, what's the name of that, John, the, 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 the this used to be Myers Tool and Machine, Diamond Back, Industries. Diamond Back Industries, thank you. This used to be Myers Tool and Machine, but it's now Diamond Back Industries, and they, they own Lot 5 and this, this property right here. Uh, across the street, we've got a, uh, retirement home that is currently zoned O&I. Mr. Ontiveros wishes to rezone this from L.I., to office and institutional to build a, a home for his uh, mother and father. He is in the audience, and I, I will turn it over to the chairman to open up the public hearing. Okay. Is that lot five or lot three? Not outlined in yellow, you know, like. Yeah, the, the yellow the yellow's not on there. This right here is the uh, the, the property line's right there, Commissioner Shell. It's, it's outlined here by the, the peach color and the, the lines right here. Still this is actually five, lot five. five. No, it's it's um it's the one by the field. Yeah, it's uh lot four is actually uh, it's not marked. It should it should say four in here. Okay. And and where it's just it's a site. It's where sites where we're looking at, yes. Sir. Okay. It's uh it's only thirty thousand square foot, it's sixty nine hundredths of an acre. Okay. I declare the public hearing open, Mr. Ontiveros. You want to address the board? Tell us what you're going to do. Yes. Yes. Um, we've we've looked into doing multiple things with it being ally, and it just it isn't what we want to do. I get. We looked at doing storages. It's just a small lot. You know, it ain't too big that we could do so many things. So we, uh, mom, mom wants to build a house for herself, and that's. That's really what we want to do, you know, as simple as that. Um, like I said, I've, I've looked into trying to leave it how it is building, but but they, it's, it's just not, it's just not working in our favor to to keep it out live. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I don't have a seat there. Any questions by the board? Um, why are we going to this zone? Um. That that's speculative on on Mr. Ontiveros's part. The O and I is actually contiguous to zoning across the street, and that does allow for a stick built home. And it's it's our transitory zoning between you know more intensive industrial uses and maybe some some residential uses a little bit further to the west. So it's kind of a a step down. But it's if um you know the, the the stick built home is an allowed use in this pro in, in this district and it's not really contiguous to any other residential district so and if they ever wanted to upgrade to an office in the home they could they absolutely could yes sir seems good to me any other questions is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak either in favor of or against <clears throat> of this request Mr. Fry, would you like to ask Mr. Crook any additional questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Crook, you had occasion to uh, make inquiry of the tax department, central permitting, environmental health, and 911 communications as to whether there were any 
uh, ongoing issues with this property? <coughs> I have, sir. Um, all departments returned no concern or, or violations on this property. Thank you. Does the applicant have any additional information you'd like to present? Okay. I declare the public hearing closed. Mr. Crook, what is the staff recommendation? Staff recommendation, sir. Um, we're going to recommend approval of the pro of the proposed rezoning. Um, as stated earlier, the Office and Institutional District is a transitory district between more intensive uh, industrial uses. It does allow the use that Mr. Ontiveros wants to to conduct on the property, which is a home, and there's some some less obtrusive uh, residential districts off to the west. The um, it does make for a good transition. The, the, it does meet the uh, Davidson County Zoning Ordinance, uh, Article 7, Administration, Section 710, Amendments by Extending an Existing District, and the uh, Davidson County Land Development Plan Policy Statements 7.3 and 7.4 would support the amendment. Staff would um, recommend uh, approval and ask you to adopt a statement of consistency. <clears throat> Any further discussion by the board? Questions? I got one quick question. This OI, since he's building a residential home, will be taxed as a residential home, correct? Um, will it be a higher tax rate since it's OI? It it potentially may be at a little higher tax rate. I know we've had some folks in the past um, rezone from O and I to residential to to escape that to escape that higher tax uh, rate. He's not restricted to putting. Like he said, his mother's home. He's not restricted in doing that. He can put a bit small business here too. He could, yes, sir. Yeah, this that, is. A that was my question. <clears throat> if you want to do a residential, keep your taxes down. Plus, he wouldn't have to go this to this degree. But I mean, he probably got his reason. But I'm okay with it. I just want I was just question. It, it, the benefit to that it does, as Commissioner Yates alluded to, it does offer us flexibility in the future if he wants to put some type of office there yeah, uh, that would that. be allowed so I can see that. okay i just wanted to ask that question mr chairman if you'd like to have a motion to okay. approve with the statement of consistency i'll make a motion second <coughs> thank you thank you carries by the 6-0. All right, the next rezoning request. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the next one is a request by Arliss Andrew Loggins. Unfortunately, the Loggins have had a, a, a death in the family, and they will not be able to attend tonight. So we would ask the commission to uh, continue this request to your uh, June, I think it's June 12th meeting. There, there are already two, well, Tonight, with the, the we'll set two applications. This one and the next application that we're going to ask you continue the two logins applications. We'll make four for that night. So we would we would ask you continue it to uh, the uh, June twelfth at six o'clock p.m. in this room, if you would please. Motion to <coughs> June twelfth, Mr. Chairman. I'll second that. One. Just a question for clarification, Mr. Chairman. If we've got to do one more, can we do do we have to do them separate or can we do them both? At, one time, Mr. Attorney. One motion. One motion for both. Or at, at would this you rather... point, the only thing before the the board is is, is this the public hearing. Yes. Sir. Thank you. I think I, I got a motion. I got a. Is there a second? Somebody yeah, else seconded. Yeah, a motion and a second. I think they were. You already got it, Debbie. Okay. To uh, <laughs> approve both C and D. <laughs> oh, no, just C. Just C. Just C. Just C. Just C. Okay. That was the 12th? Yeah. Yes, sir. June 12th, 6 o'clock. All of the votes are in. And that motion carries by a vote of 6 0. Next. Okay. For the same stated reasons, the, uh, the request by Thomas A. and Frida C. Loggins needs to be continued uh, to June 6th 
um, your June, excuse me, your June twelfth meeting at six o'clock. Make a motion to continue it to the date mentioned. Second. Second. Is it? May we already voted? Huh? Got a motion and a second. I, I, I voted. Second. Right. Oh, I thought you said second. I did too. I thought you wanted to say it. Put me down, Dave. Okay. I didn't know he was asking. I thought. <laughs> I need to put a, a bigger question mark at the end of those, I guess. And that motion also carries by those six months. Next, Ms. Crook. Thank you. Last but not least, we have a request by North Carolina Rural Water Association to rezone property located in Arcadia Township, tax map 10, lot 44E, containing 2.18 acres more or less. Said property is located on the west side of North NC Highway 150, approximately 442 feet north of the community road intersection at 8759 North NC Highway 150. Rezoning is requested to change from that of CU, O and I, Conditional Use Office and Institutional District to CZONI, Conditional Zoning Office and Institutional uh, District. If um, I know Commissioner McClure will remember this, back in um, I think it was around 2006, Industrial Federal came through and rezoned a piece of property. Can we forward that map? Oh, sorry. That's okay. There we go. Um, industrial Federal Savings came came through and um, it, it works better when you cut it on. Um, this property outlined in yellow. To get you acclimated, you have a North NC Highway 150 here. This is the community road intersection. The old Arcadia Nursery used to be here. Um, so it, right in here, and this is Cedar Lane. The, the Industrial Federal occupied this structure probably four or five years and then they vacated it and it's been on the market for a long time but there are conditions that the only thing that can be there right now is a bank that has to be a bank so what the uh, North Carolina Rural Water Association wishes to do is change the conditions on the property to allow them to function there as just an office when, unless you have uh, questions of me I would uh, turn it over to the chairman to open the public hearing and I de declare the public hearing open. Um, Who's the representative here? Uh, I should have just I, got I, the person with the coat and Matthew Lewis. Matthew Lewis, I'm sorry. Thank you. Matthew Lewis is here. Um, sorry, Mr. Lewis. That's all right. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening. My name is Matt Lewis. I'm an attorney here in Lexington at the law firm of Brinkley Walzer Stoner. I'm here tonight on behalf of the North Carolina Rural Water Association. Uh, with me also is Brian Grogan, who is the executive director of that organization. And as you've been informed, we're here essentially asking for a conditional use modification. Uh, we're asking for the modification of the conditions that only allow this track to operate as a bank um, and essentially at this point uh, the conditions we're asking to remove are the use of the property as a bank only uh, we're asking for a modification of the hours of operation which are currently set as 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturday to be uh, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and then allowances for weekends as emergencies make necessary. Uh, we would be closing. There's a condition that an ATM machine be located on the north side of the building. We're requesting that that condition be removed. Uh, we're being shielded and directed to the property to remain in place. We want to make sure that anyone living in that area uh, doesn't have to worry about, you know, someone new moving in and they're going to have to worry about, you know, lights at night, keeping them up. Uh, let's see, so we're also requesting a condition is that the drive-in would be closed to no longer be used. Uh, the exterior signs limit at 12 feet would be left in place. Uh, and as an added condition that the property would be used for uh, office use only. And these conditions that we're asking to have put in place are consistent with the use of many of the surrounding properties in this area. And so this is an area of North 150 where 
uh, it's between, I believe, it is Hickory Tree Road and Enterprise Road. And so it's an area that's diversifying over the past decade or two, has seen an influx of businesses, industries. Uh, it's actually the stretch of highways between uh, two designated commercial and industrial center zones, which were put into place by the board and the uh, county planning department uh, with the goal of spurring this kind of growth and development and diversification of the local economy. And so as a result, uh, within a mile of the track that we're asking for the modification on, uh, there's over 50 tracks now that have some form of office industrial use zoning, uh, over 15 tracks zoned for highway commercial use, over a dozen tracks zoned for community shopping use, and eight tracks zoned for light industrial use. And so approval of the modification allowing for this diversification to be used as an office uh, is consistent with the surrounding area and allows it to sort of come into, it, into compliance with the surrounding area to be used more generally as an office. Um, it's also consistent with the land development plan, uh, which has been put into place by the county. Uh, policy 1.5 mm -hmm. states that uh, the economic development efforts uh, in the county should encourage the revitalization and reuse of currently unused or underutilized structure, sites, and infrastructure. Uh, this is a building that's been out of use for over a decade now, and uh, the current uh, building would be put back into daily use, and the existing infrastructure would be fully utilized if this conditional use modification were approved and if the Rural Water Association were allowed to move in and make this its headquarters. Uh, policy 1.6 of the Land Development Plan also states that the county should encourage coordination of economic development resources among various local institutional agencies and seek regional cooperation and interaction among areas with shared economic interests. <coughs> this is essentially one of the main purposes of the Rural Water Association. Its goal is to coordinate between local water systems, state level agencies and actors, as well as federal agencies and the National Rural Water Association. Uh, in so doing, and having its headquarters located here in Davidson County, Davidson County is allowed to sort of benefit from being at the hub of all this activity, all of this economic development, advocacy, uh, you know, policy planning will be taking place right here in Davidson County, which leads into a few additional factors that I'd like to highlight. Uh, the first is that the Rural Water Association has been headquartered here in Davidson County since 1976. It's currently located in Welcome. Mm -hmm. The board of directors in, you know, trying to figure out where they wanted to put their new headquarters made it a priority to be able to stay here in Davidson County. And so approving this conditional use modification, allowing them to move in and make use of this track, uh, it's going to allow them to stay here to fulfill that mission and, again, to allow Davidson County to continue to benefit from being at the center of their organization and ad advocacy work. So, so based on that, we're, we're asking that you approve the uh, Can the board have any questions? I don't. No. Mr. Chairman, may I ask one question? I may have missed this, Mr. Lewis. Did, did um, the planning board also tender some hours of operation, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m.? Yes. And, and with with concession that you could come in on the weekends for emergency? Yes. So that okay. would, yeah, the 7 to 7 was Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday? Emergency use on weekends if needed. Yes. I don't see a big issue with that. I don't either. I, I got a question. Yes, sir. In essence, what we're doing is we are changing the conditions on this zone? Correct. Yes, sir. How is that going to impact folks that come up here and that testify that they're okay with a particular zoning if their um, restrictions are, um, are in place? And then we can go in later and change those. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. The, to, change, to change the conditions on the conditional zoning district, you, you basically handle it exactly like you're creating a new district. You advertise it, you run it in the newspaper of local circulation, uh, we adjoin, send adjoining property owner notices, everything. So it, it's publicized just like we're doing our new, new rezoning. So all of the surrounding residences and businesses have been notified of this? We, we sent notices out as per state statute and we, uh, we, we posted the property with signage as well, yes sir. Hadn't received anything back? We have received a few calls some curiosity calls and um, 
we, we did have one one person in opposition that said they were going to come tonight. So I don't know if they're here or not. Okay. We appreciate it. We Thank may you. call you back. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak either in favor of or in opposition to this request? I just got a question. Come forward, please. And state your name in the microphone there for record. Lori Holder. And I just wanted to know what they're going to do with the property that's behind. They have recently mowed that, but it was never kept up before. And I just wonder if there's going to be some traffic on Cedar Lane, because I do live on Cedar Lane. At, at this point in time, Ms. Holder, the, the conditions would not prohibit any further construction. Okay. They're going to utilize the existing building. Uh, they're going to close the drive through and just utilize it from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. as an office. Okay. Uh, and with the only the only time they'll be there on the weekends will be for emergency uh, meetings or something. So like they're that. not going to build another structure on that property. I, I'll I'll refer to Mr. Lewis, but um, come to the podium. You can say up, ma'am. Bless you. If you have something else. Yeah, and thank you for the question. Uh, that land was cleared to deal with some septic issues. There's no planned uh, new constructions or anything like that. And it's just to answer the traffic concern. Um, this essentially will be a building that about you know five to six people work out of on a daily basis. So there shouldn't be much coming and going traffic. It's actually less traffic than you would have if it was used for a bank where you have customers coming daily. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak either in favor of or in opposition to this request? Mr. Fry, you want to ask Mr. Crook any additional questions? If I might, Mr. Crook, um, one of the conditions that was in place when it was used as a bank was to have a planting easement. I yes, haven't sir. heard that addressed tonight. Is that to be retained or stricken? The, the planning easement is physically on the property. Um, it, if it's passed in the form that it's proposed, that would not be a requirement, but I don't think that they have a, a, an intent to tear those down. The, the, that's already in place, and I, I, I don't know that they, um, in, I think they, I don't think, I think they uh, uh, didn't include that because that's already on the property. So the only conditions that would be in place are those that are on Exhibit A, the three listed on Exhibit A with the two that were added by the planning board? That is accurate, yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, and also, as a point of clarification, you had the opportunity to confer with Central Permitting Environmental Health, the Tax Department, and um, the Fire Marshal with regard to any concerns by those departments with regard to this property? Yes, sir. And my, my inquiry returned with no concerns about the, the, the stated uh, property. Thank you. And does the applicant have any additional information? Any rebuttal or clarification? Thank you, sir. I declare the public hearing closed. Ms. Crook, what is the staff recommendation? The, uh, the staff's recommendation is for approval. Um, as, as we've already talked about, we're changing to from a CUO and I to CZO and I. The, uh, the conditions are um, lighting to be shielded and directed to on the, through the property. Uh, number two, the drive-in drive will be closed and no longer utilized. Number three, exterior signs shall not exceed 12 feet in height. Uh, number four, will be the property will be used for office use only and number Five, we they will utilize the property from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. with uh, concessions for emergency occupation uh, on weekends, Saturday or Sunday. The um, we're not re we're not actually the, the 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 question of actually creating an office and in institutional districts already answered here. Basically, we're just amending the conditions. And um, staff honestly can't think of a, a better tenant to go in this building. Mm -hmm. This is about as uh, low impact a use as you could place in there. I remember when that was rezoned 
and there, there was quite a bit of opposition to that bank uh, structure. So this is really a good fit, and it's a win-win to utilize the structure, and, and the, <coughs> the, the folks that are around there should hopefully be well served with the conditions that are in place. Any questions by the board? Ms. Crook, I'm just bothered a little bit by the fact that we can change those conditions because when we have people come up here and we put conditions on a property, we pretty much tell them that if there's a tenant that comes in, they have to come in with those conditions. Correct. And here we're saying we can change them. Correct. After, after proper notification. The same thing that we did when we initially zoned this property. We ran the newspaper ad in the local newspaper. We sent adjoining property owner notices to every adjoining owner, and we put a, a zoning sign up. So um, as um, noted by Ms. Holder, you know, the, the adjoining property owners were notified, and that sign's been up as well. So if they, if they had concerns, we've had a few calls. Uh, folks normally, when they called us and we explained what was going on, they just had, they were okay with it. Ms. Ms. Holder just had a concern, a legitimate concern. In the years ago, that initial shock of a bank being out there was totally different times than it is now. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. It is. This, this, you know, this is a derelict building right now. It's, it's not occupied <laughs> at all. So this is really a good fit to have somebody in there to maintain the structure. That's right. Mm -hmm. This is just a comment. I think that we should be very careful whenever the folks come up here with conditional uses. Yes, and we approve the conditional uses that they are aware that those can be changed by the same process that it was approved. Yes, sir. So that's we've been telling them, no, they can't be changed. Well, that, it's outlined in the ordinance, the zoning ordinance, that that process is in place to change them or amend them. But we, you know, we, we always notify them, let them know what's happening. It, it's it's uh, not like we didn't didn't make them aware. Okay. Any other? May have a motion and a second. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Go ahead. I hardly I'll ever second. do. <laughs> I'll second your motion. Mr. Chairman, ma'am, I make a motion to approve the rezoning request and to adopt the statement of consistency. And I second that, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Cast your vote. Good job, Commissioner Watson. <laughs> All of the votes are in, and that motion also carries by vote 6-0. Mr. Crook, we appreciate it. Thank you all. Thank you very much. We're looking at the consent agenda. Are there any items to remove from the consent agenda for discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. Second. I didn't second that. I'm asking for it. I didn't second. <laughs> Cast your vote. You got me again. <laughs> All of the votes are in. And that motion carries by vote 6 0. Next is items for dis decision information. Uh, there's a proclamation for World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. It is how I'm affected by that elder. I think I'll read that. <laughs> Whereas older adults deserve to be treated with respect and dignity to enable them to serve as leaders, mentors, volunteers, and vital participating members of our communities. And whereas in 2006, the International Network for the Prevention of Elder Abuse, in support of the United Nations International Plan of Action, proclaimed a day to recognize the significance of elder abuse as a public health and human rights issue. And whereas 2023 marks the 17th annual World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. Its recognition will promote a better understanding of abuse and neglect of older adults. And whereas the National Center on Elder Abuse and Davidson County Department of Senior Services recognizes the importance of taking action to raise awareness, prevent, and address elder abuse. 
And whereas as our population lives longer, we are presented with an opportunity to think about our collective needs and future as a nation. And whereas ageism and social isolation are significant causes of elder abuse in the United States, and whereas recognizing that it is up to all of us to ensure that proper social structures exist so people can retain community and societal connections, reducing the likelihood of abuse, and whereas preventing abuse of older adults through maintaining and improving social supports like senior centers, human services, and transportation will allow everyone to continue to live as independently as possible and contribute to the life and vibrancy of our communities. And whereas where there is justice, there can be no abuse. Therefore, the NCEA urges all people to restore justice by honoring older adults. And whereas, join us in our engaging, empowering movement and put an end to abuse. Now, therefore, the Davidson County Board of Commissioners is hereby proclaimed June 15th as World World Elder Abuse Awareness Day in Davidson County and encourage all of our communities to recognize and celebrate older adults and their ongoing contributions to the success and vitality of our county. Adopted 22nd day of May. 2023. And I'll make a motion we approve this. Second, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> motion made and second. Is there any discussion? Cast your vote. All those votes are in. <clears throat> And that motion carries by a vote of six zero. Real quick, I just wanted to say, uh, each year on June 15th, we come together and recognize to, to recognize and confront the critical issue of elder abuse. This mistreatment can take on various forms, including physical, emotional, financial, and sexual abuse, neglect, and abandonment. Shockingly, in Davidson County alone, 334 cases were reported in 2022. This is a grave reminder that this problem impacts us all and necessitates our attention. So with this proclamation, let us commit to take action to protect our elders and each of us recognize that we have a responsibility to create a more compassionate and secure, secure world for everyone. Oh, one moment, Mr. Chairman, before you go down, real quickly, since it's been um, live stream, if a person suspects that's going on, do they first go to the sheriff's department and then DSS, or how? What would you recommend a person who knows that has been is happening? I think we need to, the citizens need to know how to approach that. <laughs> We're gonna to get you up here one way or another. <laughs> She's been dying to come up here. Uh. <laughs> So if someone suspects that another person is being um, uh, being abused, then they would call DSS, the Adult Protective Services, okay. and ask for Adult Protective Services. If it is an emergency or a critical situation, of course, they'd want to go ahead and call the police first or the sheriff. Okay. Thank you, Tasha. You're welcome. Thank you. Anytime you're up here, you want to stand in One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good job. Kim must be getting old. She used to do that with four, two. Then, <laughs> 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 well, I do know that every once in a while I get fuzzy ones, so I want to make sure that I've got good pictures. Okay, I'm just going to do that. I got about two more days of it, and I'll be done with it. I'll get you what it's cool for sure. <clears throat> now we have a proclamation Learn to Fly Month, and Vice Chairman Yates will read that proclamation. 
as you all know, we got a new flight school at the Davidson County Airport. So, uh, airports uh, does a tremendous job over there. So, the proclamation is for May 2023, whereas the year 2023 is the 120th anniversary of the national recognized first in flight by Wilbur and Orville Wright, which took place on December the 17th, 1903. And whereas the Wright Brothers' historic flight in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, is recognized as the first flight that resulted in pilots improving their heavier-than-air aircraft, which had a noteworthy effect on modern <coughs> aviation. And whereas the pilot shortage in the United States is predicted to be between 8,000 and 12,000 pilots in 2023. Whereas by 2041, the estimated that 602,000 new pilots and 610,000 technicians will be needed worldwide. And whereas major airlines in the United States, such as American Airlines, Delta, Southwest, cannot source pilots with enough experience, and whereas the pilot shortage in the United States is related to several factors, including one, the 1,500-hour rule, which increased the minimum flight time required to become a commercial airline pilot from 250 to 1,500 hours. Number two, a record number of captains and first officers retiring over the next two to five years, creating an even more significant shortage. Three, air travel, de air travel demand recovering from COVID-19 much faster than the rest of the world. Few military pilots are leaving active duty, and whereas years ago airline pilot applicants were required to have a college degree, today the regional airlines hire pilots to become first officers, co-pilots with a college degree, and whereas a free program, the AOPA Foundation, high school aviation STEM curriculum. Do you all have that, Dr. Light? Nope. Is the first of its kind, offering students comprehensive four-year aviation study options aligned to Common Core state standards, next generation science standards, and FAA Airman Certification Standards, ACS, which could be readily available to all North Carolina high school students enrolled in participating schools, LEAs, and whereas North Carolina is the home of over 200 leading aerospace manufacturing 30 companies spread across the state. And whereas the highest ratio of airline pilots placements comes from graduates of ATP's Airline Com Career Pilot Program, which has locations in North Carolina and whereas North Carolina State University has conferred over 450 aerospace engineering degrees over the past five years. And whereas North Carolina Public Airport annual contributes contributes seventy two billion to the state's economy, supporting three hundred and thirty thousand jobs that generate twenty three billion in personal income and returning three point seven billion in state and local tax revenues. Whereas to encourage encourage the citizens of the state to learn more about aviation, the month of May should be designated as Learn to Fly Month in the state of North Carolina. Now, therefore, the Davis County Board of Commissioners designates 20, May 2023 as Learn to Fly Month in Davidson County and commands the observance to our citizens. Adopting this 22nd day. Sorry, I didn't write all that, but. <laughs> you, you making a motion? Quite lengthy. I make a motion to approve it. Second. Motion made and second to approve. Any questions? None. Cast your vote. And that motion carries by vote of 60. Thank you. Dr. Life, you may want to look into that AOPA. It sounds like a good curriculum. Thank you. Commissioner Yates. Yes, sir. I've got a nep nephew response to that who was going to Liberty College for a different degree, ministry degree. And his summer job, he went to work for a small airport outside of uh, um, Atlantic Beach. Uh, 
and today he is a uh, passenger pilot for United Airlines and started out just like that. Uh, and that's what that STEM program can do as well. That's right. Get the interest flowing. Good deal. Just a note on behalf of uh, all the board members. Y'all really look these proclamations over and see if there are any whereases in there that can be eliminated. <laughs> I took that out of the legislation that <coughs> Jarvis proposed. To okay. Like well, we'll we'll take that up with Mr. Jarvis. I was looking for oxygen on this one, I'm trying to finish it up. <laughs> Next on the agenda is approve a sewer allocation for Davidson Craven LLC. Mr. Leonard. Right there, that'd be good. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, we have a request that has gone before the sewer committee where uh, Jonathan Smith, who represents Davidson Craven out on New Bowers Road, let me, yep, right there, out at New Bowers Road, if I can uh, bring your attention to the, the, the map on the board to give you a location of this. New Bowers is nestled between highways New 64, Old 64, and Interstate 85. Um, several years, a couple of years ago, I guess it's been now that uh, Davis and Craven got an allocation for sewer for this parcel right here, and they had plans to build a, I believe it was a 275,000 square foot building. Uh, and they have now uh, been in the negotiations and discussions about the possibility of adding more land mm -hmm. and wanted to come and ask for additional allocation. I want to step aside and allow uh, Jonathan to come or Craig, if he, whoever wants to come and represent themselves on this request, I'll be glad to answer any question. And Jonathan, just to let you know, I've got, I've got mm -hmm. the uh, kind of a site plan of what you've proposed there on either one that you want to sure. speak about. Just let me know and I'll flip them back and forth. That's fine. Thank you. Um, I'm Jonathan Smith uh, uh, of Davidson Craven, and um, as Scott mentioned, we are developing the, uh, the building number one, the 272,000 square foot um, industrial property at the corner of New Bowers and Highway 64. That project is approximately 35% complete. Um, we've spent several million dollars on site work. Steel has been ordered, um, so most of the horizontal infrastructure is complete. and. Um, and we will be developing that and going vertical soon. Um, we have also simultaneously been working on the long-term assemblage of, um, of this additional land and have spent several hundred thousand dollars on preliminary diligence, um, um, preliminary um, engineering reports to, to verify that this site is viable for this type of development. And as we have um, become confident that the site is is good for development. We uh, approached the county to discuss the possibility of, of securing additional sewer allocation, which is necessary for this development. And um, and our our council and county attorney and uh, economic development have been working on the terms of an agreement that would grant additional allocation. Um, similar in, in fashion to what we did on the first building and um, we're we're appreciative of the opportunity to have this conversation and available to answer any questions. Board have any questions? Well how much additional allocation are you looking at John? Um, the, the discussion has been around 100,000 gallons of additional allocation. Is that total includes including the first option or? No, that's in addition to the yes, original. Sir. Yes, sir. Go to the question. Now, the sewer committee looked at this and uh, didn't see any uh, yeah. issues with it, so. Okay. Can I have a motion and a second to approve this allocation? I'll make a motion that we approve the 100,000 gallon allocation. There's a second. Second. Any other discussion? Cast your vote. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Just a question. Trish, not for you, but I appreciate that. Can, can y'all hear in the back what is going on? 
because I'm having difficulty hearing it up here. Of course, I'm old, but I just want to make sure. We were just wondering why y'all were sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The results are in, and that motion carries by both six zero. <clears throat> The sewer allocation request for downtown Tyro and welcome, Mr. Leonard. Sure. Thank you, folks. Thanks, John. Mr. Chairman, if i um, pardon for the little downtown puns, but uh, that's the best way I have of describing the areas that I'd like to speak about tonight. Um, out of the 500,000 gallons that the county reached an agreement with the city of Lexington, 100,000 of which you've, you've granted uh, previously, uh, tonight, um, it was brought to my attention by several property owners in the commercial districts of Tyro as well as Welcome that they would like to hook on to sewer now that it's a, it's available to them, and they were hoping to utilize their property for sewer, which would come out of the same 500,000 gallons. So I came before the sewer committee with a proposal of taking a small portion of that amount and designated just for what I termed downtown Tyro and downtown Welcome for properties who are currently lying right on the sewer line. They're, they won't, This won't be an extension. Uh, the sewer line is right there for them, available to tap in. But I added, added some criteria that they had to meet in order to obtain this type of uh, allocation because I know the allocation is something that we want to um, guard and, and protect because it's you know what we what we now have so if I may just read into the record the proposal is to ask for 50,000 gallons um, be, pre be uh, preserved for Tyro and welcome uh, for properties that must be located on or across the road from the existing sewer line Properties must be located within the reasonably identified downtown districts of Welcome and Tyro. Number three, the development must be for commercial or industrial uses, no residential uh, or, or office space. Number four, building plans must be presented prior to application for sewer and development must be started within one year of sewer acceptance. Failure to meet this standard will result in the revocation of the allocation. That's so that someone just can't grab and hold it with no uh, no plans in, in view. This is one year. If you get it, you have one year to start. Without it, we take it back from you. And then number five, any existing commercial uses with failing septic systems, and there are a few, must have a letter of evidence from the local environmental health department in order to apply for sewer. I wanted to show a couple of ideas of the downtown districts. This is, of course, Tyro. You have Highway 150 coming here, and you can barely see the, uh, the, the dark line that shows the existing sewer line as it goes down um, Main Street or, or Highway 150 of Tyro. And I've highlighted the, the lots that are either vacant or have residential uses on them that could be converted to commercial or industrial uses along there. You can see in this little district, there's quite a bit in Tyro that could potentially have access and meet the criteria for gaining um, access to the public sewer. And welcome, it's a little different. You see, once again, the sewer was mainly taken up to, to serve RCR racing and then all, all, all the way up to the Welcome Business Center. And there's just, there's less amounts of properties that have direct access on the sewer that's either not already on it or uh, don't seem to have any uh, uh, connectivity to it. And so with the sewer committee met, they believed that this was a viable alternative to grant 50,000 gallons, but they wanted to equally break it up into 25,000 for Tyro, 25,000 for, for Welcome. And how this would work is I would have an application come before me. They would fill out the application, show me the plans, the site plan of what they propose to do. We would bring that before the sewer committee for them to give a recommendation and bring it back to this board every time. I currently have about three of them already on my desk that would like to come at the next time. Um, but this, this, one, if it's approved by the board, we would uh, keep the tabulation. And, and if one community used up 25000 before the other, they could, uh, with this board's approval, we could go after what's, what's left in the other, depending on how this board views it. But the request is for 50,000 gallons uh, to be preserved just for these two areas. I'll be glad to answer any questions. The board have any questions? Commissioner Gates or some of the... Uh, any comments from the sewer committee? 
Yeah, you know, we felt like, like they needed it for the growth in that area. So, you guys are good with it. Yes. Motion and a second to approve the allocation. I make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to approve. Second. Second. Cast your vote. The next one is a request for sewer allocation for okay. Yates development. Got our votes in on the last Those one. Those votes are in, and that motion carries by a vote of 60 right First time. Yep, I know you're doing good till then. <laughs> I did so good. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to recuse myself from this vote here because this is on a piece of property I have. I'll step down on the front row if anybody's got any questions. Nice. I'll be uh, glad to answer have a motion and second to uh, allow Mr. Yates to recuse himself. Motion. Second. Verbal. Okay. Aye. Let me get my pen and paper. I got all kinds of questions. <laughs> <laughs> I have one other photo of, and uh, to show you of this proposed property. Um, we have a request. This is not in Welcome or Tyro. This is going to be right there on Highway uh, 64 East. This is our uh, sheriff's office on 64. And as you travel down, I think Mr. Yates owns this property currently with his business, and he also owns this track of land here. You see the, lo the, the sewer um, that is running alongside both sides of his property. And uh, out of that 500,000 gallons, he is going to be asking uh, for 500 gallons uh, for proposed use. He's going to I believe I, um, if my numbers are right, he's wanting to put in $300,000, I believe, for a proposed building, and I'll let him answer any question you may have about this. But this would be, this would not go against the 50000 that you just voted for. This would go against the total uh, of the 500000 um, We gave Randy's restaurant um, um, approval some time ago, and... Um, you know, the, the sewer is there, and this will all feed back to Lexington, but I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have regarding this, or Mr. Yates certainly can answer for himself on any specifics. I might have some too, National. Things has changed just a little bit for me, board members. Uh, I need a 1,000 gallons a day allocation. What I was intending to do there on that property, I found out I'm going to need more allocation, so... Uh, I don't think we'll use a thousand gallons a day, but I want to be on the safe side. So now I'll sit back down to. So that's so. So the the overall allocation now being a thousand. That's three hundred sixty-five thousand gallons a year. How does that work? What are you it's it's per day. We we have an allocation of five hundred thousand, and that doesn't touch the other. That it doesn't uh, touch the fifty thousand that you just preserved, and it doesn't come off of what you've given to Mr. to Davis and Craven tonight. I think if I do the math correctly, we've already given Davis and Craven about twenty thousand now, one hundred twenty thousand. So we've got about three hundred and eighty thousand or three or so that is remaining. And out of that 380,000 that remains, um, you know, what Mr. Yates is asking for is 1,000 uh, yeah. per day. So that would put us at 379 or, or whatever. And, I, and I'm sure my numbers are not exact. I think we've probably had a couple of others that I need to subtract from that, but it's, on, it's minor. And that 380,000, that's per day as well? It is, yes. Any other questions? Go ahead. Just a point of clarification, Mr. Chairman, because of what's in the proposed, or maybe, Scott, do we need to change anything, or do we need a vote to change, or can we just grant his request? I would say as long as it's noted by the board that the request is for 1,000, that would take care of, you know, their application was for 500, but you're changing it here publicly, and I think that would be fine as long as the, uh, the clerk uh, is okay with making that change. Thank you. Any other questions? I have a motion and a second. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we would grant Mr. Yates' uh, request in the additional 1,000 instead of 500 gallons. There's a second. A second. Motion made and second. Any other discussion or questions? Cast your vote. You can really take your seat back. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, 
<laughs> All of the votes are in. And that motion carries by vote of five zero. Thank you. You guys simple that right, right beside of that place. Yeah. Sheriff's Office. Participation in the North Carolina Governor's Highway Safety Program. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm my sheriff to come forward. Um, he's got a proposal here to apply for a North Carolina Highway uh, Safety Program grant, um, and I'll let him give you the details. Actually, the details are nicely framed in the item as well, but I think if you got any questions, the sheriff's here for the answer. We've been involved in this program for a long time. The LEL is uh, Kevin Wallace. Uh, he was with the uh, Guilford County Sheriff's Office. He's still over the program. And uh, I'm going to let him go with the rest of what we want to, what we're proposing on this. Hello, I'm Kevin Wallace. I'm, I'm retired law enforcement, 32 and a half years. I retired last May. Um, Congratulations. I'm, thank you very much. Um, I am still sworn with Guilford County. Um, and also a reserve here in Davidson County. I live in Davidson County. I've lived here for probably 25 years, and I was a trooper here back in the 90s. So I have a lot of history here in Davidson County. Um, for the last 18 years, uh, 18 years ago, I was appointed out of the governor's office as the governor's <coughs> highway safety law enforcement liaison. And I have had that position uh, for almost for 18 years now. Um, in that position, um, I'm appointed and I have 11 counties, 56 departments that I look and oversee and manage for um, traffic safety, seatbelt safety, and stuff like that. Um, for the reason why I'm here is I live here in Davidson County and the Governor's Highway Safety um, Program has approved for me to move the grant that I have. It's a 100% grant of $30,000 to come with me um, to the Davidson County Sheriff's <laughs> Office, um, as I'm a reserve here, um, to bring it with me, to use that money. I don't know if it's outlined in there what the money's for, but some of the money is for travel because I have to travel a little bit. Um, I also uh, was over a, a granted DWI task force for 12 years um, through the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Um, I also write grants. There's a lot of things that I do, but this is one of the things that I love is traffic and making sure saving lives. So um, I want to bring the money here to Davison County. Um, with that money, I'm able to buy equipment. I also have a driving simulator, a DWI driving simulator that we can use here um, in That's the county. Awesome. I have a seatbelt convincer. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but it's a brand new seatbelt convincer. I just received it. It's uh, $35,000 of wow. what it costs for them to get for me um, that I'll be bringing with me to house here in Davison County and the, com the community can use it. We can use it at community events. Um, the dry, DWI driving simulator, we can set it up. People can wear goggles and get in the car, and uh, we can set it like 0 .9, 0 .10, or 0 .8, and they can actually drive it and see how it feels to drive at that level. Wow. Um, so there's a lot of equipment. Um, out of the $30,000 budget, um, on the one that I've written, um, for example, we can purchase radars. We can uh, purchase... Um, speed devices, pole sign devices. For example, if you're right in the community and you see in Welcome or in Hasty area, if you have a speeding complaint there, you can set a pole sign up. Uh, we can, I can purchase those uh, with a $30,000. Um, I can buy, one of the good things that we can purchase, anything dealing with traffic. Um, when we were in Guilford County, we always went into the schools and tried to teach the young people not to drink and drive, to wear their seat belts, and not to speed. So part of that money we can use for that. Um, one of the things they're pushing now is to buy um, the golf cart with the cones and stuff like that. There's a lot of new technology out there that we can purchase and bring in the area. Um, keep in mind that these things are also, you know, they're purchased by the grant money. So therefore, in my region, or my departments, they're able to use that equipment also. Um, they will check that out. I know where it's at at all times um, to be used. 
Um, one thing that they also give me, and I, I like to throw everything out there, is they give me an iPad. So part of that money in there is to pay for the iPad fees. Like I said, that's part of it. Don't cost anything to the county. Everything's paid for at 100% um, through GHSP. Um, some new stuff that came out was driver's license scanners. So if you stop people with the new that's computer cool. system that we have, um, they can just run it, it's get them in and out of the car faster um, for that purpose also. And keep in mind, the things that we have on here, if we decide that, you know, say the sheriff comes up to me and says, well, hey, you know, I think that instead of getting radars, I think we need to change it around a little bit. You know, we need something for safety, traffic safety for the kids or something for the schools or whatever. Um, I can rewrite it as long as it's within the guidelines of NHTSA, which um, I know most of the guidelines and most of the time I know exactly what we can do with that and we can sort of work that out. Um, one of the other things um, I wanted to let y'all know, the reason why I'd like to move it here too is me being a trooper here back in the day and knowing traffic. My kids go to school here also. I know how they drive. I know how things work around here just in the safety. Why I wanted to, there's 100 counties in North Carolina, as y'all well know. For a number of fatalities out of the 100 counties, Davidson County is ranked ninth oh. out of 100 counties. I know a lot of people don't know this, and I just wanted to throw a couple out. For the no, uh, number of fatal crashes out of 100, Davidson County is ranked number 10. Okay? Out of unrestrained fatalities, people not wearing their seatbelt, in Davidson County out of 100 counties, they're ranked ninth in, in North Carolina. Out of uh, serious Class A injuries, you know, where they go to the hospital and have to ride an ambulance, they are ranked eight out of 100 counties in North Carolina. Um, Alcohol-related fatalities in Davidson County out of 100, they're ranked 13. Oh, wow. Um, this is something that I, um, you know, I talked about a minute ago, young drivers. I'm talking age 20 and younger. Fatalities and serious injuries in Davidson County out of 100, we're ranked seventh. Okay? Um, pedestrians, this kind of shocked me when I was going over this because I go through a lot of numbers with GHSP uh, because there's 100 counties and a lot of things to look at. Um, but pedestrian fatalities, part of that money is dealing with fatalities too, of, of pedestrians. Um, Davidson County's ranked 10 out of 100. Um, Motorcycle fatalities in Davidson County, ranked 11th and out of 100 counties. Where are we at in the population, do you know? Huh? Population in, in the county. Well, that was another thing. I knew. I don't know exactly through population. I didn't print it off as 172 pages for all of the reports that I have. So I just wanted to throw something out right, right quick. If you're looking at for population to population, I was going and looking at like Burke County, um, Buncombe County, it's a large county, right? Buncombe County, they're ranked 17th in population. There's a lot of people down there, but if you go to Alexander, Alexander County, it's a smaller county. It's ranked 90, 90 out of 100. Um, so just to throw some out there, Alamance County, you know, um, it's a little bigger than us. Um, they're ranked 18th. So, I mean, for a small county, if you go through and look at all these numbers, um, we're ranked low for the amount of people that we have here in Davidson County. Um, if How long is this grant for? Okay. This grant is the grant year for Governor's Highway Safety um, goes from October 1 to September the 30th, okay? It goes year to year. So every year I will reapply for that grant, and like I said, I'm appointed. So for this particular grant, as long as I'm in that position or somebody takes over my position, that grant will still continue to come. And the equipment will stay in the county? Yes, sir. That's amazing. Any other questions by the board? I have some. Uh, Kevin, um, being a former motor officer myself, yes. and I know the sheriff, maybe the sheriff wants to answer this question, but I know we have motorcycles, or the sheriff's office has motorcycles. Uh, are we looking at maybe doing uh, the bike safe program, which is um, a tremendous program for motorcycle safety? Um, 
and really this all falls under the same thing, Sheriff. Uh, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal program, and your motor officers can uh, can teach it free of charge to the citizens of Davidson County who ride motorcycles. The nice thing about this is, I mean, it's it's something that the sheriff's office is not typically involved in, but it's becoming more and more. And we're one of the bigger counties in the state, I believe. And it's something, if it affects the life, it needs to be in my business, and that's the way I see it. We have a highway patrol here. We work closely with them. There's so many things we can do with this program, with this with this grant. It's going to go in with our DARE, with our TAME programs that we have in the fifth and seventh grade now. We can use that for this. We can use it for the bike safety. So many things that can come off of this. And then as it goes on, it's my understanding that more things can come through his grant writing that he, this could be That's a start. Awesome. This could just be a start. That is awesome, fellas. I, I see here, and Kevin, you may can answer this. Um, it says that uh, I know Thomasville has a DWI task force uh, of one that I know of, but it says here that uh, there's six task force officers in the county, or am I reading that wrong? No, that is that would be some information that I sent to them. Whenever they um, talk to me about the program, that was I give them a draft of what I had already done at while I was at Guilford. So there are none That's here. That's not our numbers. No, uh, but so you will know, since this is one of my regions, this is one of my counties, uh, Thomasville was approved for a DWI task force grant. And yes, they do have that grant. And, you know, when it falls in my county, when grants come through, they do talk to me and discuss that with me. So, you know, in the future, if something like that comes up, if the sheriff would want to expand something like that, that is something that we can go forward with. And okay. as far as the bike safe thing, if the sheriff don't mind me mentioning on that, that is that is totally, that is part of a program, and he's already part of that before in the past, and I'm an instructor on on all that stuff. So, you know, if the sheriff wants to broaden that, on that, that is something that, you know, we could do through that. And one thing that uh, the governor's highway safety, the last part of what I wanted to talk about was this position is $30,000. It's a hundred percent. They refund, you know, they give you the money back. Um, they like for it, for me to be in a part-time position. Um, so when I travel, I'll be representing Davison County. Everything that I do will be through Davison County. That's so awesome. that's something else that, you know, they wanted me just to mention on that as a part-time position or a part-time basis. Um, I normally work, you know, sometimes I have five hours a week. Sometimes I have no hours a week, but I do have to, you know, do stuff for the governor's highway safety as it is outlined in the uh, paperwork I think that y'all might have. I've Any other questions? I've learned throughout my time that uh, it's, it's worth your weight in gold to have somebody who's a grant writer. Uh, they can they can unlock funds and do stuff, especially somebody who's seasoned as a grant writer, because you know what they're looking for. So, yeah, so give us two, yeah. and that's, that's perfect. The sheriff's office Love it. Any other questions? Just a comment. Uh, we're also Davidson County is also the tenth largest land area. So the the larger land area, it would give you more opportunity to have accidents and stuff. So yes, sir. The real cool thing out of this is it pulls all these agencies together in Davidson County. We're doing already, um, you know, each agency hosts a different time. We work with wildlife at, on the lake for a special project, Thomasville, Lexington. Um, we work with Denton, we work with everybody, and through the sheriff's office, we host them too. So it's getting us saturated in problem areas and, and overcoming these these problems to make Davidson County better. That's what we're all here yeah. for. And I want to say one more thing. Davidson County is um, all Jerry Souls here at the sheriff's office through the sheriff has allowed him to be my county coordinator. So in all 11 counties, I have one person in that county out of all the departments that is like a person who goes out and talks to the other agencies in the community for me. So um, Davidson County Sheriff's Office already has the county coordinator position and has been working in this position probably for about four or five years now. And I'm gonna be totally honest with you, 
they have excelled here in Davison County in the last four or five years. Amen. They have brought Thomasville together. They have brought Lexington together, the county together, and also the Highway Patrol uh, when they come together and do events and everything. And it is super nice to see them come together. The Sheriff's Department helped bring these departments together to help reduce and save lives. And do yeah, our trace program that we, we have. Very good presentation and some numbers that we probably haven't heard before. Yes, sir. But we appreciate it. Yes, sir. Any other questions by the board? If there's no other questions, can I have a motion and a second to either approve or deny the request? Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve it. Second. Motion made and second. Any other discussion? Cast your vote. If y'all would, can you focus on texting and driving, too? Yes, sir, that is part of it. And driving, Anything that's that safety wise, we're working on that through our programs already. There was a gentleman head in front of my shop on a bicycle mm. by somebody that was texting and driving and run off the road and mm. And I don't know if it's too late or not, but one thing also they wanted me to mention is uh, for the remainder of the year until September the thirtieth, I have a pot of money that is already available um that I can bring with me. I don't know how how it works as far as that goes about twenty thousand dollars that i have unused money that i could bring to uh, spend it sheriff <laughs> but i'm just saying if that's okay also if everything's approved and and it's a yes i can go ahead and work on getting that money that twenty thousand approved and bring on over uh for equipment and uh, like i said i'm not gonna hide anything from you there's a there's a um trip that they want me to speak at also in August, so that money would a small portion of that money would go towards that. So probably it'd be around fifteen thousand um, dollars that we could finish out the year on a, in equipment. All right, John. Thank you very much. Thank you for John. your time. Appreciate it, Thank you, Thank you, sir. And that motion carries by a vote of six zero. <clears throat> we're going to have a final discussion related to the county providing EDC services, Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Back at the retreat in March, we had a pretty lengthy discussion. I know it was a long day that day, but if you'll remember, we had a pretty lengthy discussion about uh, the county uh, going on its own and doing its own uh, EDC services or providing EDC services, economic development type services is what I'm referring to. Um, since that time, uh, several of us got on a call with Rockingham County, talked to them about how they do things there. Um, very similar to kind of some ideas that we had our, ourselves um, and p the budget that you had before you that you were given on May 8th has a proposed new EDC director in it. You take the funds that you contribute to the Economic Development Commission now and roll it over on this new position. Um, I'm looking for final direction to see tonight because that position's in the budget. Um, we can go ahead and post that position if, if it's the will of this board and get a head start ahead of July 1, which I think would be advantageous uh, to start trying to find someone as soon as possible. The EDC FUP board has been notified. They've, they've all had conversations internally, I'm sure. Um, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Vice Chairman and myself are scheduled to be at uh, a meeting on June the 5th at EDC to kind of, I guess, finalize this, this departure, if you will, for lack of a better term. Um, there's some issues of uh, housekeeping we need to get cleaned up at that meeting, and I think at that point we'll be okay. But uh, that's June 5th, so tonight I'm looking for some final direction on moving forward with this premise um, and, and possibly begin hiring. One of the ways we were talking about doing it, again, very similar to, to the way Rockingham County does it, is have a sub, some type of sub-board that's made up of elected officials from each municipality. Um, may, and not do this apportional thing where the county has four seats or five seats out of 15 or whatever. Maybe making it two, two, two. So everybody's got the fair and equal share. And we have all proposals come into that group that come in to the county. Uh, so everybody kind of knows what everybody's got. And if we make proposals, we do them together. Um, I spoke to a young lady who's an economic development director over in High Point recently, and that's they all have their own economic development director in Greensboro, High Point, and Guilford County's hiring for one currently. But they're also still part of that consortium. They go on site visits together. They open proposals together, so they all know what each other's doing. Um, but, Mr. Chairman, now I won't belabor it anymore. I'll open it up for any questions. That's what I'm seeking is kind of the final 
direction on this before we go into that June 5th meeting. The board have any questions? I, I do go have ahead. a comment. I think it's beneficial to have uh, the, the payer like that because generally the consortium remaining a part of that, there's things that they can do with potential clients that we can't do with, with uh, public funding. So uh, as, as far as going out, meet and greet, going out to dinner, doing stuff like that, necessarily they, they can, I, I don't know how to, how to say it, but you get what I'm, yeah. Our conversations with, with Lance, that's what yeah. came out yeah. of that. And we may have to look at making this new group uh, um, some type of nonprofit or something like that yeah. that works out of that capacity. Um, again, I, I didn't want to get too far down the line of how the rules get set up when we do this. When we hire this individual, this director, I see, I'm see i looking for them to help us set those That's things right. up. I don't want to get too much further down the line. Step one is the departure. Two is the hiring of the position, and uh, that's kind of where I am now. Okay. Any other questions? No, sir. Mr. Manager, when you go about this, I mean, um, we're going to put this out, obviously, um, I guess, through social media and so several other outlets to, to hire this person, correct? Right. And you, you're going to do like you normally do, I'm assuming, and get a pool and then bring those to us. So this is a director level position, right? Mm -hmm. Do we need a motion to get this going, or just are you wanting consensus? Well, I'm, a, I'm <laughs> actually, motion. Madam Clerk can help me here. I mean, I'm good with either way. I'm, I'm looking for the final from this board, the direction of going into that June 5th meeting. Again, these two gentlemen will be with me. Uh, there are some housekeeping items related to funding we need to tie up with the EDC, but if it's amenable to the board, we probably need the vote piece. I need to have the position. I'd like to go ahead and get started, even though it's included in the budget. That's all the way to July 1, and it's not even June 1st yet, so I'd like to get started looking because it'll take thing, every bit of June to find something. The only thing before the board is to move forward or not move forward, right? Well, right. Or is motion it to, move, to move forward. Is it to move forward and to allow you to put to post It's both, it right. It's it's both. If it, if it's amenable to you all, move forward with the same uh, premise that we had coming out of March. So move forward. And if we can go ahead and post this position, I'd be greatly appreciative so we can get started. I would. The, the only amendment that I would have with the motion is that you know the three individuals that we know that were on the the deal with looking at other position, maybe they be on the same thing where they can communicate with Casey uh, with individuals within this pool. Uh, necessarily, it's hard to reach out to all of them, but there's three that that could meet here that were able to meet with this other position where we were, we were talking about recently. So just just a note. Um, our procedures, since I've been here anyway, has been that there is a group of folks that are not elected officials that meet and interview folks, and then they take the three best or most likely candidates along with a manager, and they present those to the commissioners um, in a closed session to either interview and, and get that information. I hate to see us vary from having non-elected officials on this hiring. I think that that is good. We have the ultimate decision anyway. I'm good with that. Well, I guess I'm okay with that as long as we get to see the resumes of Amen. every person that's they, there. The manager usually brings a resume. So. I can. So as the resumes come in, we get to see those as well. And uh, we, we may want to pull one in to interview them if we see somebody we like as well because I'm, I'm not so sure we're going to be able to get this person we'll see this might be somebody we have to get a headhunter for hey, hey. this has got to be I, I think that's more likely the case a top-notch position if yeah. it's yeah. we've got a motion do we have a second second who made the mo oh that's right mr Shelley. i'm sorry thank you mr shelby <laughs> Thank you. I completely missed that. Motion made and second. Is there another discussion? Not cast your vote. Take hers verbally? I can. I worked. Okay. <laughs> Wasn't holding my mouth right. <laughs> <laughs> Here. 
Here, use mine. <laughs> <laughs> the court All of the votes read and that motion carried by a vote of six zero. Next on the agenda is approve the RAVE Mobile <coughs> Safety and Command Central Aware proposals. Mr. Smith, Mr. Wilson. Rob, come on up and um, bring your representative if you can, if you got somebody from Motorola. Do you I'm have Oh, okay. Um, at the last at the information meeting you guys took a look at that that rave and that mobile command system uh, with Motorola so the item for you tonight is to finish that conversation I think you've got an elaborate cost table there I can point your eyes at the part that matter right dead in the middle where it says total first year cost at the bottom it's based on those tiers of the amount of people covered 500 600 700 etc so right in that middle section is where the cost would be for every year um, Rob's here for any questions um, if you need a refresher on kind of the systems themselves, but I just wanted to finish that conversation and see if there was any interest to the board to move forward with purchasing these systems. We could, we, that was a good time because we could do it as part of the July 1. If we were going to approve this, we don't even know how many people we're talking about, so how can we approve this? Well, you're buying into that tiered system there. That's why my eyes went right for the, that's the 500. That's buying a pig in a poke without even taking a look at it. Unless there's a different pathway to buy. I don't know. Do you have a different tiered structure? When I looked at this, commissioners, I, I looked at the ability for us to offer the same protection that the schools are getting to the forward-facing uh, departments or with the county. So you're looking at things like DSS, Parks and Rec, Senior Services, Transportation, Tax, as well as inspections and the board of uh, board of health, I don't think anybody expected us to jump in at a thousand, but at the 500 level, that would cover most of those forward-facing departments and allow them to have that panic system. So that's kind of where we entered into the the 500 level. 17.5. a piece, yes, sir. The the, uh, the initial uh, 500, you're looking at uh, 87.50. Uh, the license fee, and then there's a one-time setup of 875. So the first year is 9625 dollars for the rave piece, and then there's also the Motorola piece that goes with that. And you don't see the benefit of letting us let's see how it works for the schools. They may tell us it ain't worth the beans after a little while. They may. I, I think what we're looking at is is that the state put out the request for proposal. The state awarded it to Rave. Rave is a company that is nationally recognized for this type of information uh, the numbers that you were provided on the, the number of alarms that uh, they've uh, accepted through their system over the year kind of puts them in the forefront of being able to do this uh, if it's the board's pleasure we could look at a smaller tier less than 500 uh, for the rave piece um, you know the idea was is that we have an opportunity to capitalize on what the schools are doing or what the schools what the state let out to the schools uh, and being able to do protect because we get we get a lot of calls from from county departments where they need assistance and this would this would allow them to have whether they're out in the field or wherever they're at would allow us to be able to them to be able to contact us and be able to us to get them help immediately. Any other questions? I don't know. I, 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 this maze this measures in with the with the school systems as well. So it does. And then what happened, Commissioner, was that the after the last meeting we found out that the two school systems were going to be a part of the rave and then the Thomasville school systems actually purchased a product called Raptor. Motorola went back to their proposal and included the Raptor interact interfaced with the aware so that we would actually be able to cover all three schools. Uh, under the under the one uh, command central aware, it takes the different pieces of software and brings them into a common operating uh, area for us to be able to monitor that. Yeah, yeah. like Commissioner Shell, let's let it try out for yeah, a while before I'm, we I'm jump like in. That. Let's watch the school system and you know let them do it. And if it works out fantastic, then that's a different ball game. But keep in mind system. also the school systems are going to be doing this, but it's going to be coming into the 911 center. So now we are in a situation where we don't we will have two separate applications for the telecommunicators to monitor because if we can get the Raptor, if we can get Thomasville schools and get Raptor to give us that access to that, then instead of having one common operating theater where we're seeing everything in one spot, plus keep in mind you're getting information from the new flex system for command for uh, statistics and so on and so forth. But you know we, instead of having those three different operating softwares in addition to the CAD, in addition to everything else, 
the aware allows us to be able to see all that in one one place. I just and don't, you can't buy yeah. the equipment along without that added all, adding all these other seventeen. We can, 50. but it, it gives the dispatcher three more applications to look at instead of being able to see it in one place. And we also don't get the the statistic information out of the CAD system through uh, for, from aware. So what you're saying is if we had five other companies in Davidson County that wanted to purchase RAV software, it would put an extensive burden on the 911 center having to look at all the applications? What I'm saying is, is that having three applications for them to look at instead of being able to monitor that all through Command Central Aware would be an issue. Having the Command Central Aware and being able to see all that through a common op a platform is more beneficial. Plus, like I said, you get we've been looking at statistics for the sheriff's office and for other PDs uh, lately, and it was difficult to pull those statistics out. The aware product that Motorola is offering in, in with this would allow us to pull statistics out of the system and be able to provide those reports readily to the sheriff's office and to the other police departments. I, I'd still just like it, them it, there is no uh, time limit on this. We can do it today, or we can do it six months from today. You can do it at, at your leisure. At, right? in, at, at it's any a subscription time. Subscription service. And um, I, I would like, if if in fact we decide to wait, I, I would like for you to document the calls that you get from which department they're coming from, because I would assume uh, social services and um, environmental those kind of things, where you have a, a whole lot of contact with people that that are not pleasant. And one of the things we did with the new system that we just put up May 2nd was we've done some things to where we can actually track that better than we could in the old system. So we'd be able to provide you okay. with that. I, I've got a question for you. I know you're a little tight on your system around here um, as far as allowing people to have radios and who can communicate with who else. But I know in other counties they allow some of the DSS personnel to have uh, CECOM communication. Uh, I foresee a lot of these positions going to a sworn officer in the future just because of the danger. Uh, but if if there was training or, or ways that we could communicate like that, would that be an issue? I don't think it would be an issue. It would be a topic of discussion. But one thing I want you to remember is, is you have a 12-channel site on the Viper system, so we have a smaller system than everybody else around us. So we've been more protective about the resource that we have so that we make sure that the people we serve are protected. If DSS had sworn, sworn officers, I don't think there would be an issue in us having a discussion with Viper and seeing what we could do with them and get them on the system. We also are in a situation with the radio system that because of the amount of channels that we have, we're only afforded a certain amount of talk groups. So we have 45 talk groups total on the system, including those that Lexington has and Denton has and so on and so forth. So to add another channel would be getting approval from the folks at Viper to have another talk group. So that's another discussion we can have too. But the short answer to you is no, it's, there's not an issue with that. It's just having those discussions. I think they run it on like a TAC channel or something, a side channel. So, yeah. All Fortunately, right. when we request talk groups to the state, we can name them whatever we want to name them. So yeah. it could be a DSS channel. Okay. So just so I'm clear in the future, what you're um, saying is Thomasville, Lexington, and Davidson County Schools, right? Mm -hmm. So you'd have to have an issue going on at all three schools at one time for you not to be able to see it? Or? No, what I'm saying, Commissioner, is that two of those school systems will be on RAVE, and that will be through, there will be a command, there will be a view that we have for the RAVE, the schools that have the RAVE. The other thing is, is that we're Thomasville elected to go out with another product. If we have that, if we are afforded the opportunity to have that and have the same monitoring capability that we have with Rave, we will have two separate products there. Two separate additional windows there monitoring that instead of monitoring that through a common place. So you're going to be monitoring CAD system, which is all of our emergency personnel, fire, EMS, police, sheriff's office, so on and so forth. Along with that, you'll have Rave and Raptor. Yes. Plus the the uh, Flex system. Plus what we've given them now is in addition to the, having CAD, they have Messenger, which is how right. we do the Correct. bolos and so on and so forth. They also have an app, the um, prepared live application. They have a rapid SOS application. There's a number of, it's not just the CAD system that they're looking at at all times. There's probably at least six or eight applications that they're having on their screen that they're having to monitor at all times. So for us to be able to minimize or unify the workflow, 
with having command central aware and having these abilities to see these things in one place instead of going to multiple places to see them is beneficial to the staff and the workflow that they have. Why did you decide to go with uh, Rave instead of Raptor if the other two school systems already have that? We didn't. De we decided to present you with Rave because Rave was awarded by the state to all schools Tom that were in the state. The other. The other. But they did before we did, didn't they? The state awarded mm -hmm. the contract to Rave to put Rave in all the schools. It wasn't something that the schools had to do. They could go out and get their own product like That's Thomasville, what Thomasville did. did. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, okay. sir. He's trying to understand here. Yes, sir. Rob, is it possible to uh, hear to do a demonstration of what you're talking about? At this specific meeting, at this point, no. I could, I could have them come back and do it. I could arrange that. That's, I think, what Alan was trying to show at the last meeting when they did the demo on the 4th. It, it was, but it's not realistic to what, I don't mean that negative, I'm saying it, mm -hmm. it's not realistic to what you guys are actually doing and looking at over there. To do that, he's we, given a synopsis of what that program does, <laughs> but what I'm talking about is what you guys are looking at with your CAD and all the other stuff, your screen. The easiest way to do that would be to do it over there. Okay. May I ask one more question? Absolutely. Okay. Go to this chart for me. Okay. First year, tell me what we're if you if you did five hundred first year cost for all the things that you're wanting. Is it the nine thousand plus the thirteen thousand plus the nineteen thousand plus the twenty five thousand? The first year costs for Rave are ninety six twenty five and the first year costs for Command Central Aware or 25255. Okay. So the total first year costs are what thirty four thousand dollars. Should be just under thirty five. Okay. Okay. But it goes down after that because you're paying a little bit extra money the first year because there's setup fees involved in all that. But you see the second year is it goes down to twenty one five for the next four years. So is it a five year contract? We sign in for one nineteen four eighty. It's a it's a five year subscription. Yes, gotcha. sir. That's not inclusive of the seventeen fifty per person, right? That is inclusive of that, yes, sir. How many people does that pay for? Five hundred. Five hundred. You got the benchmarks here, five hundred, six hundred. Oh yes, yeah, 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 okay. I'd still say we hold off till we see so. what just yeah, okay, curious question so far as the sheriff is concerned and the other law enforcement people, if we're on this system, they they're on this system. They're on it by, by us, by proxy, because we have the ability to monitor it. We would get the alarms, and we would dispatch them to yeah. whatever school was involved. I was sitting here thinking it, it, it seems like most of the problems that we've had with uh, shooters in these schools is communication in the schools or in the, uh, you know, being, being able to send the right people to the right place. Mm -hmm. um, that seems like it would be. A and I think, that, Commissioner, that's why the state put out the RFP. And that's why they chose Rave because of the the application you saw on the cell phone, the panic alarm, so that they would increase, uh, have better communication. Uh, that that piece is done. The school piece is finished. I mean, right. that's, that's already that's going to happen. What we were presenting is the ability to cover some of the staff within the county at the at the 500 employee level. As it is right now, with the schools when they activate theirs, we don't. We're not getting that. We actually would get a phone call from the school or a cell phone call from the school. We would not get a panic alarm from the school. There's really no cohesive way that I'm aware of that we would get a panic alarm for a medical or an active shooter from the schools other than getting it the old, the, the normal way, whether it's a phone call. So what is what is this system for? The, you want to speak to that? Rick, this is Corey with Rafe. Yeah, so um, it's currently going to be deployed to all the um, public and charter schools. Um, so all the staff and faculty will have that app on their phone. So if it's an active assailant, if it's a medical fire, they push the button. All the pre-configured information is going to show up in the piece app. So like Rob said, that piece is already done. What we're proposing is that we provide that same service to all of the, the county employees or 500 or whatever tier you decide to go 
go with so when they push the button okay so what you that. said is when they hit the button you get warned I at 911 yes, that's right okay well i was thinking if you didn't get that then what are we sitting here talking about you know okay but what i don't understand is why did the school purchase theirs if you don't get that alert we will get the alert. I mean, not will if you buy this. I'm no, talking about now. What What do you get now if, if a person in the school pushes the alert? We get a alert, view. We, we get a lesser view of what we would get. So we, we have an application that, the, that we will have at the Donald One Center. But again, keep in mind, we would have an application for Rave. We would have an application on the desktop for Raptor so if, if we can get the Thomasville stuff. That that will happen anyway. The, we get the school stuff by default because the school, the school stuff has been done. And so, you get an alert for that. Yes, we do. Okay. We will get an alert. Because I, I, I understood you to say I right too. now you get a phone call. call. No, no. The, right now we get a phone call. Rave is in the process of being deployed and it's not live yet. Uh, so right. once Rave is live, we'll get that panic. Yeah. But that's coming regardless because the state's already afforded that to the that's schools, right. right? Yeah. Okay. What, we're, what we were looking at doing was leveraging what the state has done and being able to provide that protection for the county employee staff. County employee staff. And I I like to see. I'm like. Here's uh, what I want to do. I'm like Chairman McClure. I like to see those numbers. Yeah. And when, see how many calls you when, actually receive from employees, emergency calls. When the school goes live, y'all have to do some training and some onward working through uh, 911. I'd like the commissioners to be involved with that to see what that call looks like coming in. You know, and like uh, we all don't have to be over there, but there's certainly commissioners on this. Uh, on this board that knows a whole lot more about radios than me. It's like reading Chinese. So, I mean. so is your direction to set up another demonstration and do it at the 911 center so that you can see it? Actually, let's see how it works yeah. in the school, the school system. system. Let's, my ears yeah. here. let's give it some time with the schools. Let's give it first. some time. Yeah. If, we do the, if we do the schools and we observe what's happening with schools, not only will we see the shortcomings, but we'll see the value of the system as well. Yes, and being as how there's no ter no limit on the amount of time that we can take, and we can do it any time. Um, we have discussed it both yay and nay. Do I have a motion and a second to either approve or deny? I make a motion that we deny right now uh, and watch the school system and kind of work with them on maybe possibilities and things that they might need with this system moving forward. Is there a second for that motion? Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hopefully not. Cast your vote. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. I the same thing. I need a motion and a second to go into closed session. So moved. How did that happen? Verbal. Oh, okay. Thank you. Y'all oh. have endured all I'm day. I'm sure Lim, Emily and the rest of them will let us know if that system don't work right. <laughs> huh? August. Right in August. August.
Amen. The monitors work well. Do you like this? Yeah. I, mean, I think he could use that mouse when he's pointing.